Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Cafecito Cultural. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to our Culture and Diversity Conversational Panel of this Professional Learning Community Group. I'm Rosa Bell, founder of this wonderful group of professionals that work together to bring culture and value diversity in our classes. Today, in our Cafecito Cultural, we are pleased to have with us our friend Akash Patel, with whom we will be talking about global citizenship in the world language classroom. Hi, Akash. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm going to read for you guys a brief introduction or biography of Akash Patel, which is super interesting in here. Mr. Akash Patel is the founder of Happy World Foundation, Inc., an international nonprofit organization that promotes global citizen, citizenship I'm sorry, and education in schools and communities worldwide. In 2018, Patel, a Spanish and mathematics teacher with Dallas ISD, was selected as a top 50 finalist from over 30,000 teachers for the Global Teacher Prize, a 1 million award that is granted annually to one teacher who has made an outstanding contribution to the profession. In 2020, Patel was elected to the National Council of the United Nations Association of the United States of America, most known as UNA USA, to serve the 2020 and 2022 term. He, he also has appointed as the chair of the Global Engagement Summit, the largest gathering of American grassroots change makers and global activists in the General Assembly Hall at the United Nations and the chair of the UNA USA Educators Affinity Group that helps educators from across the United States champion the sustainable development goals in their classroom. In 2021, Patel was inducted in the International Literacy Association 30 literacy leaders on the 30 list and elected as the president of the American Council of the Teaching of Foreign Language, ACFO. Patel is the recipient of several national and international honor for his work with anti-bias global education. He speaks six languages and has traveled to over 50 countries. We are so proud to have you here, Akash. Thank you so much for sharing Cafecito Cultural with us today. Well, I'm thrilled to be here, Rosa, uh, among like-minded individuals and leaders. I recognize so many of them here, so I'm so happy uh, to be here, especially Heidi uh, Gonka, who's joining us all the way from Turkey, and Noemi from Argentina, uh, and Heidi as the president from uh, of the Foreign Language Association of Missouri. So, so good to see you all, and also Kevin, even though I don't know you, but hey, uh, I don't know what part of the Kevin yeah, is from Hawaii. From Hawaii, from terrific. Hawaii, yeah. What language do you teach? What language do you teach, Kevin? I teach Spanish. Oh, you teach Spanish, terrific. I'm so glad. So, you know, I think this is gonna be such a good informal conversation, uh, Rosa, that I'm looking forward to it. And especially, I have three experienced and seasoned leaders like Gonka, Heidi, and uh, Noemi, who have in some capacity collaborated with me you know, over the last several years. And they're leaders in their own uh, rights, uh, in their own communities, in their own um, communities of language learners and beyond as global citizens. So I really hope that at the end of this conversation, we within ourselves can network and come up with a plan of something that we can make happen in the next a couple of weeks, or especially, I, I really hope we can turn something from today's call into action for the month of February. So I hope that is my objective, hopefully that learning objective for our cafecito, that we strategically collaborate and network with somebody in this group that we do not know. And whatever we learn from today, we turn it into some sort of actionable pieces. Correct, and um, collaborate with each other, which is the goal of today's, and it's always been the goal of the Cafecito Cultura, to share resources, to get to know each other, to be able to support each other as well. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to start, Akesh, about um, asking you about the Happy World Foundation. Hmm. How does the Happy World Foundation use global citizenship to engage students um, in language classes? 
And that's a great question. You know, I'm going to answer it with an example of Rosa's classroom, oh. my interviewer, because Rosa recently started getting involved with the Happy World Foundation. Right, Rosa? Yeah. So I have seen Rosa's not just heritage learners, but uh, non-native speakers of Spanish in her classroom engage with our many native heritage speakers. Uh, several of them are folks like Noemi Bono, who is in a, a part of a panelist in here. And Noemi is a professor. Uh, she's a professor of international business and education in Argentina at a Catholic private university in Argentina. And she leads tens of hundreds of Argentinian students. So she is just one of our many partners from different countries around the globe that enable us to have native speakers to connect with teachers like Rosa and her classroom at zero cost. So there is no cost involved, which is the key. You know, every time people are like, oh, wow, that's cool. But how much does it cost? Well, Akash doesn't make any money out of this. Neither do the volunteers that engage in this and neither do the teachers who do this for the students. The idea is, uh, is a community of John Lennons that I refer to. They're truly the John Lennons. If you know the John Lennon, the English singer who had the song Imagine and imagine a country, where, uh, imagine a world with no uh, borders where all humans lived in peace. So that is the vision behind the work that I do and the work that Gonka does with a Global Teachers Club. Uh, she's the founder of another in, uh, amazing international organization that connects teachers with other teachers, students with other students from over a hundred countries. And it's quite impressive. Um, you know, and br very briefly, I'm gonna have, uh, very soon in a little bit, I'm gonna have Gonka and Noemi each share their experiences too, as we talk about um, global citizenship. So Rosa, you know what you do in your classroom and what you have done at least over five times from what I know in the past month, you have connected your students for mystery hangouts uh, where your students spoke to, like, like last week, they spoke to somebody from Ecuador or the week before they spoke to somebody from Argentina or the week, um, this week, I think you have uh, I'm not sure, but somebody from Peru who lives in Brazil um, and your students are playing mystery hangout. Now, that's just one of the things you could do with uh, these speakers. Folks like Heidi have used uh, speakers uh, that we sometimes collaborated with Heidi and she turned the speaker's speech into a lesson on the sustainable development goals. So she very well took that lesson into a higher order, um, you know, higher level uh, levels of thinking on the Bloom's taxonomy. And here her students are analyzing, their students are making inferences and all kinds of things at the higher levels of the Bloom's taxonomy. And at the same time, they're tying it into the sustainable development goals where she focused on quality education, right, Heidi? So from her nodding, I know I'm going to let you speak to you, Heidi, about your experience. Mm -hmm. But what I'm thinking right here is for, we've got Kevin is a teacher who is, who's probably not done this before. So Kevin, maybe today after this call ends for next week or the following week, when you have your students, Kevin, I would love to connect you with Noemi or one of Noemi's students. So you can try this out in your own classroom. And if you have a non-Spanish -spe speaking classroom where you're doing something different, I would love for you to connect with Gonka and her network of Global Teachers Club. And you know, at this point, if that's okay, since it's such an informal conversation, Rosa, yeah. I think Gonka should talk about her Global Teachers Club because she's a partner of ours. Uh, I met Gonka for the first time uh, in Turkey. I was a finalist for the million dollar teacher prize and I happened to stop by in Dubai. And you wouldn't believe it, um, on my way to Dubai where the ceremony was happening, I stopped in Turkey for just three or four days so I could visit with another fellow top 50 teacher of the million dollar prize. And she took me on a tour of her city of Samson. And on that tour, I visited multiple schools. And one of the schools I visited was Gonka School. I will never forget my experience I had in Turkey with Gonka School. Gonka is a stellar English teacher in Samson, Turkey. She was so driven the day I met her. She said, um, Mr. Patel, all of these things that you're doing, I want you to share with my students. I shared with her students 
even though I didn't speak any Turkish, her students and I bonded so powerfully with an interpreter that she had there that the students still keep in touch with me on Instagram, on Facebook, on other social media platforms. And ever since I visited that place, Gonka has turned her classroom into a hub of global citizenship learning and understanding that has inspired hundreds of other educators to follow suit. And right now for Gonka, it's like 11 or 12 in the night in Turkey. But this lady, she took that one call for action and turned it into her own nonprofit today, which is called the Global Teachers Club, which she'll tell you more about uh, in a few minutes. But through that club, she has networks of teachers from over 150 countries that connect with other teachers or with other students. That was the power of that one experience we had together inspiring her students that today, fast forward, look how many years have passed, three, four years. In three years, Ms. Gonka has turned it into a revolutionary movement. Noemi is in Argentina, and hopefully, uh, Gonka, I want you to speak right after this, maybe you and then Noemi and then Heidi. So Noemi is from Argentina, and she and I met because she invited me to speak at her university to talk about the nonprofit that I lead. And little did I realize that I'm at the university talking to her students, and her students have already accepted tens of hundreds of calls to start connecting with students all across the United States. Her university students just during the 2020 pandemic helped me with over 500 video calls. This is just one country, Argentina, and one university of the University of Salta, um, a Catholic University of Salta in Argentina. Her students helped me with over 500 video calls in Spanish classrooms in all 50 states in the United States. So that's the power of these connections. So you never know what could happen, Kevin. Tomorrow it could be you leading tens of hundreds of calls in Hawaii with your students. And I hope that's the goal. And then uh, yeah, I, I, is this a good time, Rosa, if it's okay for Gonka and uh, Noemi to make some uh, statements about the work that they lead? Absolutely. Yes. We want to hear and we want each one to participate as well. Let's start. Gonka. <laughs> Hello again. Uh, I, I didn't know that it could be so um, so nice atmosphere in here, so I decided to turn on my camera. I thought you were going to talk to a, a huge crowd as usual, and I was going to be a listener, but this is uh, a really good for me, and I'm really proud to be part of this uh, esteemed um, team, let's say. Well, um, I, I'm also thankful for all the things uh, Akash told me about you. Yes, he came here and by chance I met him and it was the day uh, that, that was turning point on my life, on my teaching uh, experience, I can say. It, it, it touched my heart and my, uh, my life, let's say. Well, everything started uh, the day we met. He's... Um, he told me uh, how he connected uh, his classroom with other uh, cultures, with other nations and students, and it, it uh, opened a new uh, um, window to my life. And then I started to do the same thing, and uh, we continued for some time. And uh, I, I can say that my students were so enthusiastic to see him because until they met uh, Akash in person, they, they had never had the opportunity to talk uh, with a stranger, an American, an Indian. And I understood and they understood that uh, learning languages was really nice. And uh, he, they also understood that we can communicate, we can love each other, even though we are from different cultures, from different race or religion. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Akash was the first person to connect my classroom because we have smart boards in our classroom and we have internet connection. He told me uh, I had a lot of opportunities in my classroom, in my school, because we have non, uh, non-stop uh, internation and uh, internet, pardon me, and uh, smart boards. And he told me you can do that. And we started like this. After him, I connected some other people. Then um, my friends saw me uh, I can do this. Uh, I can connect some other um, um, people or uh, teachers from uh, abroad, and they they offered me to create this uh, global teachers club, and they 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 offered me to become membership 
um, in the in a membership position as co-founder, and I accepted. Since then, uh, I connected too many um, countries, too many students, and uh during the pandemic last year especially i i had a lot of uh, i organized too many uh, meetings with too many uh, international uh, students and they were all thankful at the end of the day because maybe they they could only um, met one one country but i i connected too many and now we have monthly gatherings with students and teachers in teachers uh, gatherings we try to uh, we try to have two speakers. They they all teach others their experiences. Or, um, for example, if they are good at using ICT skills, they they teach us how to do that. Or they teach us different points, and uh, we we get we learn a lot of things from each other. And in student students gatherings, there are some different things. For example, uh, uh, with Marcela, you know, from Argentina, she, she was the coordinator and we had SDG project together. And there were uh, about 15 or 16 countries and we all worked on SDGs together. And at the end of um, five months, we presented. We gave. Uh, we gave a presentation. What we did during this uh, period, and what else? Uh, we we organized virtual tours for students uh, to uh, different countries. Students present their countries to other students, and they interact. They can ask each other a lot of questions, and uh, they they can see them online. And I think this is the biggest part of this uh, platform because of course there are there is a lot of information uh, on the net they can find about other cultures other uh, countries but this is live and uh, they learn everything from uh, the native and uh, they can ask questions and i think this is unique for them and what else uh, we organize some other cultural uh, exchange um Activities for students. Uh, we we had costume party. Uh, countries wore their students wore their traditional clothes, and they uh, gave presentations about their traditional clothes as well. And they asked each other questions. So we go on like this. Um, we want to do more things. For example, in April, we are planning to have an online uh, music uh, program. And we, we would like to do something like uh, The Voice, but online. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are preparing our students um, for this program right now. And these are what I remember. I'm, I'm really happy that uh, Everything started with the, the on the day I met Akash, and this is what I'm trying to do right now. Uh, one hour it's ago, okay. before this meeting, I, I invited a German teacher to my club. He was really happy, and uh, he told me, I'm really happy to have met such a person like you because you know how to connect uh, people from uh, different countries. Yesterday, I had a meeting again, and we are trying to. Uh, write an Erasmus project in, in European countries, and I invited a lot of countries there, from Norway to Spain, Italy, Turkey, me, and Germany, France, too many countries. And this is also an honor for me because uh, I know that Turkish people are generally, uh, they, they have a stereotype in the world. And we, we people think that we are Muslims and we are terrorists and the thing I'm trying to change is we are not terrorists, we are not different from other people. Mm -hmm. And um, when I get a lot of friends from other countries and they appreciate what I do, I feel more happy. I feel happier because I understand that I, I try to do something to break the ice or break the stereotypes because they can see that we are not terrorists or we, we don't have any other intentions while uh, we are connecting to people. And all the things are for our students and for global citizenship, uh, you know, yeah. diverse. And last year we had an ET Unique project. We had uh, European quality labels and the name of the project was uh, Unity and Diversity and Akash was there also for uh, our uh, honor guest and he told uh, us uh, the things that we need to uh, forget or we need to unite as a, you know, we, we need to global globalization 
So these are from me and I'm really happy to have met Hello. all of you. I already know Paula, she and we met, we meet in our gatherings and I'm really happy to have uh, a friend like her too. And I'm really proud and um, honored to um, be friend of Akash again. And I hope we can do together more things, better things. Sure. Ms. I'm Gonka, really happy. <laughs> yes. Ms. Gonka, can you put in the chat a link to your Global Teachers Club so teachers like Kevin, Clarissa, Maritza, James, Heidi can join yeah, the club? Sure. So can you yeah, put sure. that in the link so today they can, this is one action item. Uh, guys, so, you know, Gonka and I met in Turkey, but you see, Gonka was so inspired. She not only connected her students with people all over the globe, thanks to her leadership, she today has created a nonprofit group that again, at no cost, connects teachers and students from all over the globe. So she's a mover and shaker herself, uh, including with her networks of teachers. Please join her group because she has resources of people she can connect you with. And uh, Gonka, while you put the link in there, I just wanted to quickly say hi to Maritza, uh, Clarissa, and James. Uh, what do you guys teach? Clarissa, if what do you teach? I teach Spanish in high school. Terrific. Uh -huh. Maritza? I teach Spanish at the Duke Horton Watkins High School, which is located in San Luis, Missouri. Oh, in Missouri, with high, so you know Heidi and James. Yes, what do you yes. teach? She, I was going to say that Heidi is my next door uh, colleague. So. Is she? Oh, <laughs> awesome! My world. James, what do you teach, James? I teach dance. I teach Latin dancing, salsa, mambo, bachata. I can. Oh, wow! I can. That's how I know Rosa. Let me tell you, James Jones Jr. is here in Hawaii with us, and he have always support me in the school, uh, also in Kevin's school. He uh, he comes to uh -huh. our school and he teaches students about mambo. Uh, come on, James, share this. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, the, so I do a presentation on the <clears throat> excuse me history of mambo. Sorry about the lighting. Um, history of Mambo and where it came from and all that kind of good stuff and then how it filters into the culture and the language and how dancing and listening to the songs helps to learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. I've been studying Spanish since high school, way back in the 80s. Um, I still don't speak fluently, but it's, it's a great language. And even if you don't understand exactly what the song is about or what they're saying, you can still feel the song, right? The language still gets you. So I think that's a beautiful thing. And being able to share it at the, at the high schools and stuff is amazing. You always want to, you know, give something to the kids, especially in, in uh, art form. So, yeah, that's what we I have, We have done so many things together with James yeah. here in, Cam in Campbell, in my school, and in Hawaii. Um, also, James, if you can share your link, because he have an academy called Alma de Mambo. Oh, and yeah, sure. If, if you can put it on the chat, please, so we can also. I sure can. And I was always telling James, you need to, you know, teach teachers some classes as well. He came, mm. he was one of our first, um, um, uh, members that came into our Cafecito Cultural. Mm, mm. We, was, we was like, what, in September, I think, October? I um, think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. A little while ago. And I'm going to bring him back later. <laughs> some, some working in there later. And you know, since you yeah. mentioned, James, I think all of that's so incredible, as you mentioned, the value of art and uh, dance and uh, to, to add that value to the Spanish classroom. I was thinking, mm. how could we connect some of what he does, you know, uh, to the work that we do. So our work predominantly for folks who came in late and now that I see some links in the chat, I'm gonna explain more about what Gonka just put in the chat uh, for folks, uh, Clarissa, Maritza, we connect classrooms virtually. So all we do is let's say Clarissa's high school students like Rosa's have been, Rosa's for the last month. Rosa, how do your students feel about the video calls? What do they say every week? Every week they're like, who, who are we gonna have? And uh, I blame it because I put it as every Thursday. So they waiting for uh, that okay. Thursday. They, it's it's every Thursday. Thursday, they're meeting a mystery person. Okay, James? So the yeah, mystery person so in one of the 21 Spanish speaking countries. Yeah. The students do not know where this person is from. And they are out there waiting with their maps, asking questions in Spanish to find out where this person is from. Nice. And we help do this for teachers in all 50 states at no cost. 
And yeah. our volunteers lead this movement because we have over 1,500 volunteers, many like the students of uh, Professor Noemi Bono, who is in this uh, cafecito right now. Mm -hmm. She is an international business professor in um, Argentina. And she has tens of hundreds of students that uh, in Argentina last year, their students, I was just mentioning that they helped us with over 500 video calls in one year, just from one city. Now that's just one of our volunteers. Can you imagine what 1200 of our volunteers from around the uh, globe can do when it comes to calls? So right now, before I forget, and I know uh, Clarissa has got a comment or a question to ask, in the chat, you're gonna see three links that Gonka po 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 posted. Gonka runs a similar movement to the work that I do, but Gonka and I are good friends and I, I admire the work that she does because she is truly about changing lives. She, as she said, is truly about uh, dispelling stereotypes, helping people understand that through these video calls, uh, we can show our children that we can help them dispel stereotypes about people of color, people of different backgrounds and countries and help them realize that we're all the same. Yes, mm -hmm. Gonka may look different than Clarissa, but guess what? They both have the same dreams and aspirations for their family. They both have the same goals and ambitions and they both bleed red and they both have emotions. So that is such a powerful thing to inspire in our kids so that they can realize that we're all the same, which is a powerful uh, revelation, understanding and lightning experience for the students so that they can be the global citizens of tomorrow and they can be the champions of anti-bigotry, anti-prejudice, anti-racism. So Gonka leads a very good movement. Please feel free to join her WhatsApp group, which is in the chat. She also has a Facebook group called the Global Teachers Club. And then I believe Rosa put also a link to our website, the Happy World Foundation in the, uh, um, in the chat. So please, uh, through that, and then I'm gonna give you my personal, because this is such a cafecito interpersonal, I'm gonna give you my WhatsApp number or my cell phone number. What I hope happens after this call today, Clarissa, Maritza, Heidi, Kevin, since they're teachers, they can send me a message or send Gonka a message and find a way that we can collect. I, I think we, you should send a message to both of us because Gonka has a whole network of teachers and students and I have a whole network of native speakers for your students. So Gonka leads a SDG style project-based learning and I lead more of the acquisition of foreign language. So through these video calls that Rosa's classroom has been experiencing for the last month, um, you can give your students that window to the globe. So send me a text message and be like, hey Akash, I have a Spanish class next Thursday. Trust me, even if you want a speaker on Monday, I can find you somebody for Monday. But uh, so just so you, and is that right? I'll send you a WhatsApp contact in like maybe- a minute, yeah. In less than an hour. Because I already can start thinking. Yesterday, Rosa's like, hey, can you get me somebody from Peru? Two minutes later, I'm sending her a contact with somebody from Peru who lives in Brazil. So it's very easy for me to do that. Um, and I'm grateful that I have that network, that I'm privileged to have that network. Many of our students do not have that privilege do not have that privilege to have traveled to 50 countries, do not have that privilege to be speaking five or six languages. So I have that privilege. I acknowledge my privilege, but I'm using my privilege in a good way to help others uh, also gain access to travel experiences without ever leaving their classroom at zero cost. So uh, here's my number that I'm gonna drop in there for you with Gonka's information that you've seen uh, and Gosh, also, um, when you talk about um, my, I want to share this experience briefly. When I start um, with you and in, in bringing over speakers to the classroom and see all the excitement and all that, we was working on a project about Monumentos Historicos mm. and that conversations help the students to complete their projects. Projects mm -hmm. that later will become a cultural pavilion in school because in our schools, there are 3000 students. And for them to know more. So culture is something that I'm bringing over to my school, like on a daily basis in my classroom, of course, like a daily basis. So this has helped so much and inspire students so much to learn more and more and more. They're always looking for this Thursday. And even though that I complete my project, I want to learn a little bit more. So they're going to have a huge exhibition in school, a cultural pavilion in which they are going to describe their experience talking with 
someone else in another country while they are learning a second language, which is the goal is to inspire most students to take language classes mm -hmm. and learn from, from many, many experiences that they will have in class. So this, this is just, I'm just falling in love with this uh, foundation and the support and the huge group that you have because when not only when you provide me the number of the person who is coming to my class, it's how fast they answer and how mm -hmm. well educated and willing to do anything to have the students engage. Someone's come with their own presentations and someone's just have this conversation one-to-one -one with the students and they just like mouth open, right? Like, oh my gosh. And then the excitement about, I think I know where it is, but then they ask another question and then they like, oh no, it's not from there. So it's it's just to keep them engaged. That's what we want, right? That they learn their language, but, but they still interest and engage. How you keep them engaged all the time because I see my students every single day for 90 minutes. So- And since you mentioned that, uh, and then I'm gonna get to Clarissa and Noemi, but since you mentioned that, let me make a brief comment. Uh, she said that she used this video call that was a mystery hangout and she turned it and tied it into her unit of historical monuments. Mm -hmm. and landmarks. So every call that you facilitate is not just a mystery call. You can tie it to multiple disciplines like James dances. I mean, think about dance and the historical perspective of dance. That's a powerful lesson that could be embedded into James mm -hmm. video calling a Spanish classroom for 20 minutes. I mean, think about the value of it. They're not just seeing dance. They're seeing history. They're seeing geography. They're seeing places. They're seeing culture. So much can come out of a 20 minute video call that people uh, underestimate the value of something so powerful. And for folks like Heidi, she connected with, from what I remember last year, a teacher, one of the top 50 teachers around the globe who was a finalist for a million dollar prize. And Heidi, can you explain before we get to Clarissa and her comment, what did you do with that? And how did you tie it into uh, SDG quality education? Well, I have to say like, Akash, you know, I met you, I think in ACFL 2018, and you were just so passionate about what you were saying, right? Um, how to continue connecting with everybody. So I took that call and I remember I contacted you and you sent me that name for um, it's Professor Soto mm -hmm. and he, Germán Soto, and he has been so wonderful. We, we have kept a friendship after that. I think we have four years working together mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's just bringing it to the classroom. And I tied it to educational quality uh, because at that moment we were discussing one of the stories that we have, I, I basically created a unit and then I wanted to bring that connections to the classroom, which is so important, right? And you were mentioning like, we don't need to travel like in order to see something when we can bring it to the classroom. And that was before pandemic. So mm -hmm. we started that. I remember we connected with you, we were on Facebook. Sometimes things didn't work because of the technology, mm -hmm. but the kids had that opportunity to interact with native speaker. And uh, it was great to have that mystery piece. You break it down in a way that is manageable and comprehensible. And then we were able to learn about the education in Argentina. And then after that, of course, they're able to compare education in Argentina or any other country, because also I brought some uh, resources from Colombia. And then they were able to compare it with, the, with their own education. And we're talking about... Um, school, like what is the ideal school? Sometimes in those moments when you're making that comparison, they soon will say like, wow, you know, I have a lot of things, you know, here mm -hmm. that I can take advantage of. And then it brings that uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, you say it, epiphany or saying like, oh, wow, you know, I didn't know. And the students enter in that uh, reflection. And then they have to write, I, I told them to write like a person in the Department of Education to say how they can get help and receive some funds to support schools that are in need. And not only, you know, we can help other countries, but also in our own uh, state, we have schools that are in need. So mm -hmm. is that connection, like, so what I can, I can I do as an agent of change in order to impact my community? So I really love that piece uh, and connected that to the SDG of quality education. And um, I have been continuing doing that um, for that unit. I, I also want to include it other, I want to include other SDGs too, but it's that piece uh, of 
connecting, seeing what is my role in my community. And it's sometimes the students can say like, well, but I'm just a student, I cannot do too much. But yeah, you can do a lot because when you are all together, right? You you, you make a group, you say, let's do this, let's have others. So um, it's, it's, I really appreciate that. And uh, you have been so wonderful in the piece of connecting with people. And I agree, it's right away. So like, I need someone for tomorrow. <laughs> I need someone for Monday you know, is is we can get it just right away and tie it, as you said, to different interdisciplinarity units. And she did that. So as you see, it's not just a mystery call. Uh, Rosa connecting it to historical monuments. Um, Heidi connecting it to SDG quality education, comparing and contrasting types of education in different countries, leading to students thinking about, hey, I'm privileged in America. I live in a great country with a great educational system. What can I do for people in Colombia, Argentina, and other countries? So that one video call led to action, action civics at a global scale, where they're now taking action in other countries. Um, so think up outside the box. And also the reason why I'm bringing this up, and then Clarissa, um, you had a comment or a question. Yeah, I just, um, I was going to say, I actually found out about your Happy World Foundation with, through the Global Seal. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. my kids, because we had been able to travel, you know, obviously the pandemic, we hadn't. So we have traveled via Zoom a couple of times. My students were so excited. I'm not, you know, I haven't done units and all like Heidi and, and Rosa, but mm -hmm. they have, they were so excited to have that outsider. And I mean, we are, we have 40% um, 40% of our school is Hispanic, but mm -hmm. it was still something for them to talk to someone who was actually there. I don't know, but they, they talked about it for days. So I'm so excited that I thought it was kind of one and done. I didn't realize that it could be one and keep it going. <laughs> so I'm so I realized that I communicated with you, Clarissa, during the Global Seals when we partnered and we connected your classroom with somebody. Yes. Yes. So, so like was the it? first time, um, I'll be honest, I don't remember her name. She was well, because the first time it was supposed to be someone from Uruguay and they couldn't do it and ended up doing a, a lady from Argentina, which is perfect because we had done a unit on Argentina. Ah. So they had tons of questions and <laughs> and all. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 super excited and stoked because I have the same kids again. And I and there were two classes that didn't do it and they were mad because they were like, well, how come they got to do it? We want a day to speak. And I was like, oh, well, we're supposed to. And I had some personal things. So I, I didn't get to follow yeah. through. So now I'm excited to know that we can connect. And yes, Clarissa. Because last year we were not letting teachers do more than one call because last okay. year during that month, we helped over 1,000 calls in three weeks. So wow. I was like, oh boy, I can't do like, uh, I can't okay. do eight classes per teacher, that would be 10,000 calls in a month. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I probably wouldn't be sleeping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're absolutely me, correct. Yeah. Uh, delegate my tasks to other leaders. We have leaders now, like Noemi. Noemi helped me a big deal. And Noemi, I think you should talk now because Noemi is a university professor in Argentina. If you had one of the students from Argentina, Clarissa, it's very likely their teacher Absolutely. is Noemi who was leading this project connecting hundreds of her university students with people in the United States. Since okay. Noemi and I met, we have, I don't know, Noemi's uh, school alone has helped me, as I told you, just in 2020 with over 500 calls and 500 different classrooms across America. So Noemi, uh, what do you have to say Thank about- you. Thank you, thank you for, for letting me be here. I'm so excited. Thank you, Akash, you are always so kind. You know, um, I have no other words than gratitude from Akash because the, since I met him, I not only could uh, lead uh, my students to what they really need to, to be close to uh, speaking uh, a new language, a different language in real situations that is very, very difficult for us, you know? Um, so far from any uh, native speaking countries, English speaking countries, that it's very, very difficult. So uh, very few of my students will be able to travel once. And in this case, um, Akash and all uh, Unhappy World Foundation and all his connections made us so happy. Um, I can say my, my students were 
uh, always very, very enthusiastic and very passionate. And it is uh, due to Akash because he um, he touched his uh, his hearts, their hearts. And it was not only theirs, it was also teachers and also uh, their families, you know, uh, many families behind the, the my students at the university uh, were very excited to, you know, it's not very common for us in Argentina to have this, uh, um, this possibility. So uh, I really appreciate everything you did and everything you do, Akash, because I would not be here today if you were not uh, giving me Rosa's uh, contact and it was that immediate and Rosa I appreciate also uh, thank you very much for having me here um, thinking on on the powerful words that uh, Akash is saying and this interconnected world we are right now is that uh, I could tell you so many things it will not be possible in, in very few words in, 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 so, uh, in such a time that we, we might have here. We will need many cafecitos to, <laughs> to talk about it. Thank but um, just to have you an idea uh, that how this evolved, as uh, Akash said, all my students, everybody that participated in, in, a, in any of, the, um, of these mystery hangouts, uh, they were ready to be um, volunteers. They are still volunteers in Happy World Foundation. Uh, I lost uh, the notion already of how many of them are still in contact with Akash and they are their friends. And uh, probably there will not uh, be any more my, my students and probably I will not see them anymore. But I, what I know is that we touch their hearts and that their lives will not be uh, the same anymore, you know. Most of my students study international relations. Some of others, uh, some of them study international uh, business and uh, I have different faculties where I teach uh, and all the, um, the, the chief of, of the university uh, uh, appreciated that very much. Uh, they are very um, helpful with me, they are pushing me for uh, and supporting me for many other projects. Uh, last year, um, also uh, among these uh, connections, I was able to uh, get in touch with um, with Goncha. Uh, she uh, it was one of these types of. Uh, um, activities that Akash invited me to, and Gonsha, I, I met Goncha. We we started talking in the chat, and then she gave me all the information. She added me to the Global Teachers Club. I am part of that, and I am very very happy to be there. I also met Marcela Vishan, who is uh, in Argentina. We are also in another group, and she is very. Um, helpful too with the SDGs. I introduced the SDGs in my school at high school and also uh, at the university. And that is and that is now and it was very powerful, such powerful that we were in connection with the climate change uh, activities. It was a program uh, there was one day in November when we, uh, it was a whole week and we presented our project. And um, I worked with the SDGs on number 15, which is, um, which has to do with life on land and we could work on climate change as an all uh, all that together, we worked very well uh, in the classroom, and finally we did. Uh, we could do some actions, concrete actions, and we um, we started planting uh, trees in different areas, and uh, it was very nice because my students at the university uh, gave, gave a name to their uh, their trees. And it was in the campus, in the area where they usually will walk and they will see their trees growing there. So it was very, very, uh, very nice really um, to have uh, those gestures that will uh, leave 
traces in uh, in their lives because, as you said, um, uh, powerful actions that uh, started at the very beginning when I met Akash. Um, that uh, helped me to be more confident uh, and also to to try uh, that it was not only me uh, that has uh, this opportunity of opening the world uh, of opening the doors to the world and uh, these anti-bias um, uh, proposal that happy world foundation has so thank you very much Ash. It is certain uh, that uh, I'm leaving many things aside, but um, Maritza, Kevin, and whoever uh, wants to get in touch with me, um, I think Akash can can sell, uh, send you my contact. I will be very happy to to be with my students. We are. This is, in fact, the the last uh, weekend. Uh, we are on holidays. We are starting. Uh, tomorrow uh, on Monday, sorry, on Monday, and in at the university we are starting on the second of March. So I will not have students right now, but uh, we can organize something uh, whenever you want. Thank and you. Even though she said she doesn't have students, she doesn't realize <laughs> that she's a university professor, and many of her students have already gone out of her university classrooms they still are in touch with me and our nonprofit and connecting hundreds of students uh, across the United States. And Noemi doesn't even realize that her students, you know, they didn't just participate because they were getting some sort of service learning credit in class at the university when they were her students, but they do it because they like it. They do it because they see the power and the value of one connection to transform the lives of our inner city and rural kids that do not have the same access to resources, do not have the same access to travel, do not have the same access to people that maybe Akash does because he has the privilege to have traveled to other countries or to know people from other countries. So thank you, Noemi, for that very powerful uh, testimony and Gonka and uh, Heidi. If there's one thing I can call for at this time is that Kevin, uh, Maritza, Clarissa, and even Heidi, because she teaches. And I know Heidi's uh, from Missouri, where I'm going to be the, their keynote speaker in the fall. I would love for Heidi, for during my keynote, to highlight a case study from Maritza's classroom and from your classroom of what we have accomplished together before the conference, where we connected your students and you turn it into something like a service learning project where Noemi students have now planted hundreds of trees across their campus or Heidi students called for, what can we do for underpoverished students in other countries? I would love to showcase something like that at the conference. And I'm also speaking at Southwest Colt. So because I'm gonna be speaking at Southwest Colt, Kevin and Rosa can be my guinea pigs, where I can be like, hey, look at all the cool things we did at their classroom. And I don't know, Clarissa, if your state's part of Southwest Cult, then no. No, I'm, I'm from Georgia. Georgia, okay. So, well, uh, Clarissa, you could be someone I could address at an actful convention. Okay. So uh, that still has implications. You know, I would love to see at the end of this cafecito, how can Clarissa, Kevin, Maritza, uh, Heidi and I and Rosa work together and partner with Gonka, partner with uh, James, partner with Noemi to bring these experiences virtually. Because James is probably not going to be able to fly to all of these states to share his experiences, <laughs> but he can from his kitchen table or he can from his garage or from his living room share a quick five minute dance with students during his free time. How powerful would that be in your 45 minute unit that you're teaching? Five minutes of James adds so much more excitement, changes the vibe of the classroom, mm -hmm. and it's so much more memorable. So I know, Maritza, you've got your hand up, head raised. <laughs> Actually, I have, um, I have a meeting that I had to go to at 3 o'clock. So, but I just want to say that um, I'm so happy to hear about your organization. I, I heard about it before, and I'm going to take advantage of that. As you can see, I already sent you a message. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, okay. Yes, and, uh, I got your text message. 
<laughs> we uh, actually we are very involved. My classes are very involved. We do work with the World Pediatric Project, an organization right here in uh -huh. St. Louis, and we are very, very. I mean, we work with um, actually maybe in Gonca and I. We can talk about how we can the two organizations can help each other because right now they're in need. And and um, talking about having music, a couple of years ago I had a DJ from Costa Rica that came to my class and did had the students rocking and moving the whole, and it was awesome. So yeah, any experience like that that you can bring to the classroom not only. Uh, brings that fun, but brings that connection to the world. And uh, it was very important for the students. And, you know, they're very computer savvy. Immediately they had their friends joining and we had this huge class uh, dancing. But anyways, thank you everybody for sharing. That was amazing. I uh, I had a great time. I had to go because- like Marisa, said, that Tuesday, 11.30 Central time, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, thank I'll you. get you somebody from a, a really cool you. country. Okay, uh, happy Marisa. weekend, everybody. Clarissa, great idea. You know, I was we're we're searching in my district and my school for ideas for the COBI literacy now that we are, you know, in this pandemic time. So thank you because I like that idea a lot. Thank you and have a good thank afternoon. You, Marisa. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Guys, since Maritza just brought that up, I have to mention something. Uh, if you know Jennifer White, one of the finalists for the Actful Teacher of the Year this yeah. past year. She and I recently contacted the vice president of Costa Rica, who is a black woman. And guess what? She responded to us on Twitter. She, I already had connected the vice president of Costa Rica with a teacher here just down the street from my house in Frisco, Texas. And she video called her classroom in Frisco, Texas for 20 minutes because of a tweet. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> well, I, gosh, let me let me That's add something happening. that I got right here. Thank uh -huh. you to this um, mystery calls, right? And it's not only stays in the classroom. In my case, I as an advisor of the Hispanic Honor Society, the Sociedad Honoraria Hispanica, and advisor of the Multicultural Club, they have unified these two clubs. And they, well, let me explain this. Since 2019, the Multicultural Club celebrates a uh, multicultural festival mm. in, in between high school students in Hawaii. Now, because of the experience that they have through your organization, they want to do the festival, an international multicultural mm. festival of all students celebrating their ethnicity, highlighting their values, everything. So wow. see, this is not just stays now in the classroom. This is expanding so much. I'm going to share with everyone the link of the Google form, the math students, if I didn't do this and they get to hear this conversation, they will say, why do you didn't share the link? The link that they create is a Google form for um, everyone to, uh, inviting everyone to participate in the international, for first time, international high school multicultural festival. So nice. there it is. And let me know if it works good or, or so. And they, re they are asking for different um, countries and students from different countries to have at least two minutes presentation in the festival to talk about their culture, anything that they would like to bring. It could be poem, music, dance, um, just wearing the clothing and explaining, explaining the, the cultural um, daily clothing or a special clothing that the country in particular uses. I sent already to the societies, but now I'm taking the opportunity. And after the recording, I will go ahead and and do that. So okay, so I'm gonna. Yeah, we, we need permission to see the form. Yeah. So yeah. Can, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna fix it and give it back to you. And please also, if you guys can share um, your email through Messenger, so mm -hmm. that I can also send the letter. You know, the the whole letter explaining everything. This is just like a form. I think Gonka, uh, Noemi, great opportunity for Turkey to present at uh, yes. the, the right. event yeah. in, in Hawaii yeah. and for James even took, Argentina. Yeah, on 2019, James took his yeah. academy. His group was there presenting as well. Really? <laughs> and uh, and Kevin yeah. High School, yeah, Kevin High School was doing a international fashion of all of the dresses that with Myra Hickling back in that time and Joyce as well. It was such a good um, acceptance in the community that mm -hmm. now they got more inspired going through these phone calls and, and get to all the excitement. They say, wow, can we do the festival now international? I was like, yeah, it's not limited awesome. here. Yes. That's awesome. So I can yeah. say after having worked with Rosa's Honor Society, 
Honor Society and that festival, <clears throat> her students are so professional. We did interviews, the camera work, uh, the organization. I've been to a lot of salsa festivals, mambo festivals, and their her students were like top of the list. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the way they handle it's, it's great. And then here in Hawaii, I'm Kevin, maybe Kevin and Rosa I mentioned it before. Here in Hawaii, they're so accepting of other cultures and they're so compassionate towards what other cultures have been through because of what they've been through here in Hawaii, right? Yeah. Towards, towards, especially, you know, people of color or, or what have you. And not to make it political, but they understand the role that the U.S. has played around the world, right? So they're very accepting of other cultures, uh, very compassionate and very willing to learn. And, and especially Rosa students, she, her students embody that. So, and Kevin's as well. So, yeah, anything you have for Hawaii, her students, please, please share. We'll, we'll, we'd love it. And, and myself too. I can share it with my groups. You know, you know what? This is awesome because like we used to do an international week at our school because we, at that point, we didn't have a lot of diversity. And so to increase the their understanding of what diversity really meant, I had everybody to kind of dig into their own roots and realize that we're not all just a monolith. And, um, and it was, it became so uh, big that the Hispanic community, the parent, the, there were teachers who would say that was the only time they would see Hispanic parents because they felt completely wonderful and open to come to the festival. But it became, so it became a thing with food and all that, but this time, so we couldn't continue it like that. But this sounds like an awesome kind of twist in how we could redo it and hook up with our um, English for um, English as second language department as well to really because that we work with them on the international festival. That is awesome. And I have an uncle that lives in Hawaii. So I think this is really cool. I know he's lived there forever. But anyway, that is cool. That is very cool. Yeah, it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, either, Rose, I have a question uh, for I you. I'm sorry. I would like to say that, uh, sorry, uh, this is what we are doing in our Global Teachers Club. We have uh, costume festivals, music festivals, and also food festivals. So we can work together and uh, I, I'm sure it will be uh, really nice because I, cool. we have coordinators from over uh, 70 countries right now. And uh, there's a huge uh, community in our club, so we can do it internationally because we did it. I, uh, all, a lot of children from different countries they wore their costumes, traditional costumes, and we had a festival. And in April, as I told, we are going to have a music festival international again. And uh, food festival, we are trying to organize it too. And uh, we can do it together. And you are all welcome if you join us. And if we can uh, do it together, it will be much better because we don't have uh, all the countries yet. For example, today I invited uh, Nigeria for a presentation, counter presentation, but she said uh, her students didn't have access to internet. Uh, so she, she couldn't accept my invitations. But if you join us, uh, I'm sure we will, uh, we will become much bigger together and uh, it will be much more uh, uh, nice, I'm sure. And it, it's, she's saying 70 countries, guys, 70 countries, putting them together, one teacher. Can you imagine? It's an impressive movement that I really hope that uh, Gonka inspires you to follow her footsteps, to do something similar in your communities. I mean, how amazing would it be? to have, you know, 10 Gonkas in 10 different parts of the globe, uh, 10 Rosas that do uh, video calls with her classrooms. She did Equatorial Guinea too. She's a Spanish teacher. She got a guy from Equatorial Guinea, remember? Yes. Rosa? Yeah. That uh, was how replicated uh, Rosa's yeah. energy in 10 different places or Heidi's innovation with SDGs in Spanish in 10 different places. Clarissa's initiative when she ran it with Global Seal last year, I mean, we just need to clone all of your creative talents and inspire other people in your communities. Because I'm sure now, Rosa, that you do all of this, other people want to do things like you. And I'm right. sure Gonka, <laughs> she started really small and now she has a movement of teachers from over 70 to 100 countries. It certainly uh, inspires and sparks curiosity from other colleagues mm -hmm. like, hey, 
Uh, Gonka, can you please help me do this in my classroom? Or Rosa? Of course. Uh, please I, I, don't hesitate you. to contact me if you need anyone from one country. I can find you a lot of teachers from different <laughs> countries because I have too many friends and I, I try to invite them to our community and uh, from Spain, Italy, Poland and uh, Europe. From Europe and all other countries. Yeah. I have too many friends with their students and uh, you can connect your classes with them. If you need help, I'm here to help you. And I know Akash has a more circle uh, of friendship, but uh, I'm here to help you too. Yes, please, please That's message awesome. Donka, add her on Facebook or on WhatsApp. I can, I can you write my uh, phone number here in the chat. Uh, and to... that's her WhatsApp number. Uh huh. Mm, yes. Please, please find a way because I would love to showcase collaboration between Gonka and Clarissa, Gonka and Heidi, Gonka and Kevin, Gonka and Rosa at some other conference that I go to and be like, look what the founder of Global Teachers Club and Rosa did together. And it turned into a project like, like Noemi's where students are now planting trees with their names on it. Uh, I mean, think about the collective power of networking. Hopefully today's uh, cafecito is all about how can I connect with James? How can I connect with Kevin, with Gonka, with Noemi, with each person, because each person brings value and meaning to this group. And how can we together as a group impact change locally, which will tr tr later on, you know, have these ripple effects globally. Yes, and um, I'm typing and putting all the information here so that later we have, uh, uh, just in case, you know, if it doesn't work for you guys in this moment, then we got it over here for you as well. And uh, Marta had an impressive festival, by the way, you know, like her uh, festival with cultural costumes. I saw it all over on social media. Very, very impressive. So at our nonprofit, we mostly connect classrooms with adults like Rosa's classroom with one person from Equatorial Guinea, one person from Argentina. Gonka's work is even more uh, impressive that she connects classrooms with classrooms or a, a group of classroom students, students mm -hmm. or students connecting with students from another country, which is so cool too, because sometimes our students want to hear from people their own age and they, mm -hmm. they yes. love it. They want to see, oh, what is a 13 year old like in Poland? Or what's a 14 year old like in Germany or in India? And they want to get that feeling. They want to talk to them. So it, it's really cool uh, what Gonka leads. And I just am very honored to call her, Noemi, as my partners. Uh, I, I look up to both of them, their work, their sincere heart, their selfless spirit, their servant leadership, which is uh, so, you don't see it in many people these days. Servant leadership is so rare. Uh, people do it because they want to win an award. They want to win something in life. Uh, these people do it because they see the value of it, creating a world without bigotry and prejudice. And I have seen that in Noemi. I have seen that in uh, Gonka's work and their servant leadership, that they do it so selflessly. And then, of course, our teacher leaders like Heidi Rosa leading the way with Clarissa in these uh, spaces. So... I know I've already got a message from Maritza and I'm going to hope to hear from Kevin. I'm going to hope to hear from Clarissa again. And of course, Heidi, I want to see how Heidi, I really want to partner with you to see how we can share that story with your audience in the fall. Uh, Absolutely. Some I, used, I, I, used, I just wrote it right here and I feel that would be something wonderful to do it by, by then in the fall. So yeah, you yeah. get some of your teachers and those will be our guinea pigs and we work with them <laughs> and we create those stories. We take pictures and we showcase that at the convention. So other teachers in Missouri feel like Akash is not just sharing a fairy tale. He's sharing something that teachers in Missouri are actually doing. And this is great because sometimes you can share those things. Uh, and sometimes people may think that, oh no, bro, it's a lot of work. But no, it's just like when you are like showcasing and then you see this and it's happening, say, hey, let me jump. I really want to be experiencing that. So that's a great example mm -hmm. there. So well, thank just thank you so much. I'm just very excited about it. Yeah, I look forward to hearing from you, Heidi. Heidi, Kevin, Clarissa, and we Rosa. We are going to keep connected because this is so yeah. wonderful. You see how this conversation has helped us to get um interact with uh, somebody in turkey somebody in argentina and that's how the students start that's why that the students came and say i want the festival to be international now 
why we're just going to keep it here in Hawaii. And then the problem is that they were looking, it was very difficult to find the international clothing so that they can have a, each. And we do have um, students with different ethnicities, but they don't have the clothing. So the president said, you know what, let's just put it international. This, and I say, where do you get the um, idea from? She said, because you, you calling people all over the world and bring them over here. And now we have a project. This could be, and then her, her, you can see her eyes like expanding, like the idea was coming just like, like raining over her. And I'm, and I'm thinking, oh, Akash, we, we have done something real good in here. Uh, having these students uh, having the opportunity because not all of them sometimes get to leave Hawaii or know anything else and they don't have the same uh, opportunity, right? We don't know later what they're going to do in their lives, but they will have that experience forever. So I want to ask you a question. We're talking about um, the foundation and everything, but I want to ask you what inspired you to create this foundation? You know, there's two reasons, um, just like Gonka. Gonka lives in a small community. Gonka's a city of Samson. She doesn't live in the city of Samson. You live in a remote part of Samson. Because I remember going to her city. I went up the remote mountains. I remember many parents and families next to Nurtan Atkis' school. They were walking to school from extremely humble backgrounds. Same was my upbringing in Oklahoma. I came from India to Oklahoma in the middle of nowhere in the farms and fields and ranches. You can imagine these students had never seen somebody who's dark like me. So if somebody like me was to go there or Rosa to go there or Gonka could go there, they would all be thinking, who are you? And what are you doing in our town? Because <laughs> it's predominantly ranchers and farmers. So when I saw them, they saw me and they were so excited. They were, had all these curiosities. Where are you from? What do you do? Tell me more about the country you're from. And I saw the spark in the eyes of, their, of those kids, Rosa. So when I saw that spark and I realized that the kids didn't know where India was on a map, I was like, boy, these kids don't know where India is on a world map. They don't know where Turkey is on a map. They don't know where Argentina, in Argentina, they speak Spanish. They think that Spanish is only spoken in Mexico. So uh -huh. to be able to expand their horizons, I started inviting my own friends, just my friends from Facebook. And I was like, hey, I started inviting one friend at a time on video calling. And I played back then what it was called mystery Skype because we didn't have Zoom then in 2014. And then little by little, I realized, wow, this is cool. What if I turn it into a database and share the database with people from all across my state? 2014, 2015, we are now in all across the state of Oklahoma. And then slowly, slowly over the years, we created a network. And then thanks to my speaking engagements nationally, internationally, we now connect teachers in all 50 states. Thanks to Actful. Last year, thanks to Global Seal, in just one month, we connected a thousand classrooms, more than a thousand classrooms. Our goal was a thousand, but we reached, I think, 1300 and something classrooms in one month. So that's just why I created it. I saw that spark in the eye of a kid, a rancher, a farmer who has never left his farming community in Oklahoma. And then he started communicating with people all over the globe. I was like, man, what can I do? Akash cannot be in 50 different places at the same time, but I know so many other Akashas that look just like me from India, from Turkey, from Japan, from all over the globe that are global citizens. And they can give me 15 or 20 minutes of their time on video call and we can create this into a database. And hey, yes, today we have a database of over 1,200 people from all over the globe that reaches out. Now, these are adults. We don't have a database of teachers like Gonka does with her Global Teachers Club, where she has a database of teachers from over 70 uh, to 100 countries. Ours is purely adults, mostly high, uh, college students, sorry, not high school, college students, professionals. They could be doctors, lawyers, engineers. They could be police officers from other countries. So ours is a network of professionals. And that's what inspired me, uh, Rosa, to create this, is that spark in the eye of a kid and knowing that there was a gap in global education and I needed to do something to fill that gap. Thank you so much, Atkatch, for having this time 
out of your busy agenda. Every time I saw their pictures in um, Facebook, I'm like, oh my God, he's all the way there and she's <laughs> going to be able to bring his yeah. papacito here and stuff, but you did it and you always there present no matter where you're at. And I, I really, really appreciate this time. Sometimes I just like, should I ask him? I just saw him enjoying so much good time over there in Peru. But I send the text anyway. I need somebody for next week. <laughs> and, and he just, uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's go. And then before I even can um, put my phone over the desk, I already have somebody in WhatsApp saying, oh, ask us me to talk to you for the next week. And, wow, that is so fast. So. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much for um, sharing this time with us today. I don't know if anyone else would like to ask something or ask any more questions. We're almost um, finishing today. <laughs> yes. I had a question that uh, has just come to my mind. Uh, in Turkey, we have a curriculum that we have to finish and we have a lot of exams, you know. We have to do it uh, because the exams are common in our school. For example, if I teach um, 11A, a B, C, D, uh, I have to take the same uh, exam, you know. So I have to keep up with uh, the other teachers uh, in the curriculum. But I, as Rosa said, uh, as Rose said, I see your um, movement. I see too many uh, global uh, classrooms. But how can you do that? I mean, uh, how does your um, administration let you do that or... Do, do you uh, don't you have a curriculum that you have to finish? He asking you that. Yeah. That's a teacher. That's Clarissa. What do you think, Clarissa or Rosa? <laughs> like, how do you connect all these video calls to your curriculum or standards that you have to teach as mandated by the government? <laughs> it falls under a mode, and it can be interpersonal. It can be interpretive, in that you you are hearing and understanding or they're speaking with having a live interaction or it's under culture, it's under communities. So I always link it to one of those standards. <laughs> and then I just work perfect. I make your way. And, and like I said, the Argentina one worked perfectly, but I, the Colombia one that I'm going to ask you about, that one's going to work perfectly too. <laughs> awesome. You're asking me for somebody from Colombia? Send me a text message and I got you somebody in the next few minutes. <laughs> there you go. Ask us, Heidi want to know where are you right now? Oh, Heidi, I'm right now in Dallas, Texas. My next trip is to Brazil. Um, I, I'm trying to, you know, use up a lot of my PTO that I have not used over the last six years, Heidi. I have over 45 oh, days. So that's why I've been out a lot. Uh, you know, I'm like, so, jealous. Jealous. I'm so jealous. I just want to use <laughs> so it all up. So I was in Peru, in Colombia, now next month, Brazil. Then I plan to be in Hawaii with my parents. I'm planning to bring my parents Wait. to Hawaii, Rosa, Wait. in Wait. April. Mm -hmm. April. April. Kevin. Yes. Hey, uh, Kevin James, let's get ready. Red carpet. Coming home. You need to set something up. I would love to, by the way, I don't know if you know, my family works with elephants in uh -huh. uh, India. So my grandparents, they work with elephants and I shared with Gonka students. I also shared with Noemi's university students. Uh, a lot of my pictures, videos with adult elephants, with baby elephants, our work oh. with uh, extracting elephant DNA to study poaching patterns, our work making elephant poo poo paper. So a lot of science standards connected to that. And I could tie it in and speak right in Spanish. So that would also connect to Spanish if you want to. I've shared that with hundreds of thousands of kids around the globe. They love, I, I really hope to write a children's book someday about my work with elephants. I have some incredible pictures where they look like they're my babies. So, you know, I would love to see if, and also anything else we could do together while I'm in Hawaii with my parents. I would love to visit with you guys. Yeah, please, uh, please send me the, the, the time and all that because I want to take you to the um, Olelo uh, interview. Uh, a little yeah, bit the the studio. yeah yeah the studio take you over there have a beautiful interview with you and then we, we're just gonna take care of you don't worry about it yeah 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 let us know, <laughs> let us know when you're coming we, I need we're, gonna, to we're gonna have to um ask us in all of the islands in one moment with olelo that's my uh, biggest supporter here in hawaii and television so come on come when is oh two months let's get ready two months yes we'll get ready for it and i yes. really want to we can collaborate and do things that time where, Calissa, where's your, Calissa, where's your uncle at? You said it's your he, uncle that's here. Yeah, he's in Oahu. Oh, that's where we're at. That's so. where we are. Yeah. 
See, I just need to just come stay with him and then I'll just kind of come to the party. Yeah, and, like, come in April. Larry, is that one more? Oh, and, and James, tell them. Please you send me dates. On a weekend. So I can make so arrangements. <laughs> James, you got clinic yeah. on the weekend, right? James, give salsa. Well, I was, yeah, I have yeah. my dance. So, well, I have many dance socials now, but my main dance social is tonight. I'm on the Mambo Saturday social down in town in Capilani Boulevard at Arthur Murray. So that's every second and fourth Saturday. I have other socials. Ah. Uh, throughout the week so, and on the other Saturday. So no matter what time of year you come, there you go. I got something okay. for you, man. I got classes okay. and or you just sit at the beach no. listening to music. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? You gotta bring your dancing shoes, you know, your summer clothing because it's summer, summer clothes. And you're yep. good to go. We took care good of you. Good to go. We yep. got you. Okay. Awesome. Got you. I'm looking <laughs> well, forward to it. Anything we can so do much. together, that would be such a good time we can have and I think fellowship and train other teachers. I would love to for you and Kevin to bring on so many more teachers to yes. replicate the work that you're doing in your classroom. All right, let's work. You're part of Southwest Cold. You would be my big presentation for <laughs> my Southwest Cold keynote. Like, mm -hmm. look at what oh. uh, Rosa, Kevin, James, and I inspired in the state of Hawaii. Yeah. So they have such a great group of teachers, man. Every time I've taught class, and I, when I went to Kevin's high school. All those teachers were dancing with us. You know, it's not like they were, you know, standing on the side and watching the kids. They were in there with the kids. And that that's great for a kid to see. And I was going to say also, Akash, you know, I, I, don't, I just met you today, but obviously you worked very hard, but it's also important for people to see that you have fun and enjoy life and take a moment for yourself. That's that's a huge thing. A lot of people get bogged down in life, right? So that's also where the dancing come in, comes in. A lot of people go dancing because they want to forget about everything else. Uh, and everybody needs that little bit of time. I danced a lot when I was in college. And I got tired of studying and working and studying and working. I'm like, you know what? I need to just go dance. And so that's that's a big uh, place where I come in. But yeah, their, their community of teachers here is amazing, amazing. So yeah, if you come out here, we can definitely make it happen, man. Make it something real nice for, for not just you, but for the schools and stuff as well, yeah? And anyone else that comes, you heard him say he's coming in April. So <laughs> make your plans. Come on with it. Meantime, I hope to hear from all of you guys, uh, Kevin, Clarissa, Heidi, Rosa, as teachers, that I hope we can all work together with Gonka, with our network, with Noemi, and create some really cool experiences before we get to see each other in person. Of course. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, yes, everyone. Thank you. It's been picture. amazing. Thank you, Ash Cash, Noemi, Kevin, Heidi, Gonka, James, Clarissa, everyone for being here today. I'll see you guys in our next Cafecito Cultural. And, and Rosa, you have more faces for a picture. The picture, you, you need a picture. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. there, wait, wait. Let me take my. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uno, dos, tres. Here we go. All right. We're going to have awesome. a awesome.